Hello and welcome to the latest Royal Roundup from Talk TV. So pop the kettle on. This is the Royal Tea. I'm Sarah Hewson. Coming up today, the palace appeals for calm over the rumours surrounding the Princess of Wales. Campaigners demand an apology from King Charles and Uncle Gary gets stuck into Harry and Meghan on Celebrity Big Brother. Joining me today to discuss all that and more are the Daily Mirror's royal editor, Russell Myers, royal commentator and Talk TV regular, Afia Hagen, and royal podcaster and Talk TV host, Christo Fufas. Now, Kensington Palace has appealed for calm over the constant rumours and conspiracy theories surrounding the Princess of Wales's health. The palace hit out at the madness of social media after weeks of wild theories attempting to explain Catherine's absence. Russell, I mean, you've written about this story and, and no one can escape uh, this story because this really has gone crazy. Yeah, I mean, it? I think the palace have said it best themselves, the madness of social media, and it has really taken off uh, a life of its own. I mean, it, one feels not only for the palace, but um, for Princess of Wales as well, because here she has undergone a uh, very serious surgery, a couple of weeks in hospital, extended period of time on the sidelines. And, uh, you know, she should just be allowed to sort of rest and recover. I mean, that's exactly what um, what the plan was for her. And if you uh, if you dare to open up any sort of social media platform over the last couple of weeks, and we are still a long way from yeah. Easter. Yes, I mean, that's what's are. really shocked me, that the palace had always been very consistent in their language. They'd said she needed that period of rest and recovery. She wouldn't be seen until after Easter. And it seems as though the last couple of weeks, especially this, uh, the conspiracy theories of where's Kate, why haven't we seen her, um, are possibly sort of fueled by how different the King has been with mm. his respective ailments. I mean, he was in hospital for enlarged prostate, then his cancer diagnosis, he's been very, very open about both of those. And, uh, and we have seen him, of course. We've seen yes. him being driven to uh, around London in the state Bentley. We've seen him meeting the prime minister and, mm. and other politicians. So very, very different. But I think, you know, Kate deserves the, the respect and, uh, and, and the privacy that she's, that she's asked for. And, and unfortunately, you can't, um, you can't turn social media off. And uh, that's the big problem. And what's quite remarkable is then we get Kensington Palace having to respond mm. about these conspiracy theories and trying to calm everyone down and saying she's exactly where we, we said, said she was. was. Yeah, I think they kind of, basically their statement said, we said what we said and that's it. Everybody just needs to calm down. And the thing is, you're right, you know, you can't turn this off. And this started kind of in a dark corner of the internet, but it's now just everywhere. Mm. All these wild conspiracy theories that, you know, she's gone into the Big Brother house. Well, she hasn't, her uncle has, but she hasn't. <laughs> We're going to talk about that later. <laughs> yeah. Or she's perhaps growing out bangs, takes three to four months. You know, Russell, <laughs> you've been there. Do you know what I mean? It's just, it, it's utterly bonkers and I think and some of them are pretty sinister as well actually, some of them are they? which you know this is not the place to repeat no. them at all some of them are pretty sinister but I think you know the thing is I think Kensington Palace actually did the right thing in just saying we said what we said everybody calmed down because the silence was kind of making things worse and you're also right in saying she's conspicuous by her absence because we have seen the king going to church, going for treatment, meeting with Rishi Sunak, and it kind of almost underlined the fact that we haven't seen mm. her. Now, she has actually been seen, uh, Christo, because a paparazzi photographer got a photograph of her being driven uh, through Windsor by her mum, Carol, not published in the UK uh, because it was a pap image. Uh, but she has been seen. You might think that would calm the conspiracy theories down. It did nothing of the sort. It, it didn't because, I mean, the image, it was really grainy, so it could have been taken in a few different ways. And I have to say, actually, I think that this is one time when it comes to royal coverage that the UK media can pat itself on the back a bit because I think it's incredibly respectful that it's not, that no one in the UK has published that image. But to pick up on the point with the comparisons as well to the king, um, we don't know what's wrong with her and we don't know whether whatever she's had treated has the kind of recovery that would enable her to be able to do anything. We, we know particularly what's wrong with the king. We know that he's having treatment. We know that that means there are going to be times when he's 
very ill. There are times where he's going to be able to, to do things. We do not know what's wrong with her. We know that there has been something really serious. Mm. And so unless we know that, we really can't, or, or I think those naysayers can't really speculate as to why she's not out, you know, handing out bouquets and, and, and meeting people. Mm. Um, but I think it is a, it, it's, it's, it's a nice... It's a good moment for the UK press for not publishing that picture. And, and it's interesting because, you know, there have been a lot of calls. Why can't we have a photograph of her? Why can't she just have a photo and, and release it? Well, why should she? Well, I mean, yeah. why well, would she, she? I mean, I wouldn't want to. When would I... you have this conversation in the workplace with anyone? No. You know, this is the issue. And I don't think, you know, if, you, if your colleague, if a colleague had an extended period of time off work, you wouldn't go up to them and say, you know, what's been wrong with you? Yeah. And you wouldn't, wouldn't even have this conversation. Send me a picture. Yeah, 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 yeah. A picture to uh, no, of life. No, you know? I do think that some of it is well-meaning, actually. It is out mm. of genuine concern, which is she is so well-loved. We just want to see her yeah. and know that she's OK. Some of it rather less. Yeah, so. and it's been pretty sinister. You yeah, it. And, and I wonder, Russell, has it also backed the palace into a corner here? Because even if they did think at some point perhaps they might talk about this or might release a photograph, you know, this Mother's Day coming up, now, if they do anything, it, it kind of... Is fuel to the fire of the conspiracy well, theories, isn't it? It seems like it? they're yeah. they're responding to that, that clamour. That is yeah. the issue. That they, again, they had said and been very very clear. The language used was um, that she would be back after Easter and that mm. she she wouldn't be seen up until then. You're totally right. I think if it if it is, uh, it would be seen to be reactive if they mm. dare to do anything now. So mm. um, it's unfor it's unfortunate for the palace, and I don't think there's no precedent for the, for, for no. how to deal with it. And Again, the, the issue with Buckingham Palace dealing with the King's illness uh, quite very, very differently mm. is, a, is a big problem for them. But I think that also the, the Palace is setting themselves up for what they might need to... how they might need to deal with the media when it comes to the King's health. Because if they backtrack on saying, look, you're not going to see her till after Easter, oh, actually, but here's a photo beforehand, mm. there may be an occasion in the future where we won't see the King for a month mm. because his health... and. Um, if, if they backtrack on, on setting a time frame, everyone will say, well, hang on, they did it for Kate. Yeah, they, they, they released true. a picture of her. Why aren't they doing so for the king? So I think this is the palace setting these very, very definite boundaries and they will not go back on them. Um, otherwise, they will always have to go back on them. Absolutely. But a fear confusion this week over when we are going to see the Princess of Wales yeah. uh, again mm -hmm. because uh, the Minister of Defence uh, announced a date, yeah. June the 8th, for a Trooping the Colour event with the Princess of Wales. Great flurry of excitement. Yep. But all was not perhaps as it might have seemed. No, I mean, I think um, the Ministry of Defence jumped the gun, excuse the pun, on that one. You know, published a list of uh, Trooping of the Colour events. Uh, the Princess of Wales was there on June 8th that she would be inspecting some troops. The King, I think it was June the 15th. And then the next day they <laughs> updated their press release and her name was gone. And it's things like that that only add fuel mm. to the fire of where is she or where is she not? And is this going to be her first official engagement? That's much longer than they said, you know, at first they said after Easter, now we're going to see her on June the 8th. Are we going to see her before then? You know, it just fuels all that fire. And then to remove her name just does it even more. And I think to myself, guys, there's no joined up thinking here. I really hate that phrase, but there kind of needs to be, you know, get your house in order, get your ducks in a row. Needs to be some better communication because all this does is pour fuel on the fire. The rumor mill is already turning and it just adds to that. And the Ministry of Defense, again, I'm gonna use another uh, ammunition uh, analogy, shot themselves in the foot. <laughs> Very good. Just for you. You like that, don't you? I mean, I, I like suppose it. it's because of this complete absence of, of mm. information and there's nothing in the diary and, and no future plans that when something happens, everyone kind of jumps yeah, on it. I think yeah. we're right to get excited, you know, whether it's us as journalists or royal fans of people are saying, well, that is a date set in stone. And that's a positive she's, sign. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And she, she's going to be there uh, several months after the Easter date. So... Um, I think the palace probably um, didn't, didn't didn't do the right thing that by forcing the, the Ministry of Defence to take that down, they should have probably just let it slide. Exactly. If Kate wasn't up to it at the time, they could always get a replacement. Mm -hmm. Nobody will probably remember the debacle, but by making it into a situation, they've uh, 
it's uh, become a bit embarrassing. I, I disagree. I think oh. they they want it. They want that moment. The palace wants the moment to say, "This is when she's you're, back." You are totally right. On that. And, and I and I think that's why. And and maybe you're right from a PR point of view. It's, it's it will backfire. But I think that that was their their first thought. We want that moment. Mm. The Ministry of Defence, you're not getting. Well, that. the language yeah. used was, "We Only. are the only ones to confirm the Prince and Princess of Wales yeah. diary arrangements." Yeah. And. I mean, again, it, it was, the cat was out of the bag. They should yeah. just let, let it run. What they don't want is what we had last week, which is a kind of pre-announced engagement and having to pull out at the last mm. minute. And then mm. why? What's happened there? You know, the, all of the chaos around William deciding not to go to his uh, godfather's memorial service. But, you know, if you're talking about June the 8th, we're a long, long, way, away, a right? long yeah. way. That's a long way past Easter as well, isn't it? But hopefully we will be seeing... Uh, the Princess of Wales back, back to full health yeah. uh, in her own time. Then. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure we will do, and it's just a, a, a period that everyone just needs to calm down. Calm down. Thanks. <laughs> I will. Words of wisdom there from Russell. Uh, meanwhile, uh, King Charles has continued his royal duties this week, which included a meeting with the Chancellor Jeremy Hunt ahead of Wednesday's budget. The King also met with the ambassadors of Algeria and Mauritania, uh, and so. Um, Russell, we are seeing him, these small one-to-one -one meetings, not the big engagements, but still carrying on, and also very much allowing us to see it, as we've been discussing. Well, very much so. I mean, it's a you know, Commonwealth Day next week on Monday, mm -hmm. and uh, that's got a big, big event in the, in the Royal Diary, and I think that'll be very important for, for the King as well. And uh, he's going to be releasing a video message. So, you know, all these little instances, whether it's the, the small private engagements, meeting the Prime Minister, meeting the Chancellor, um, it, it sort of gives a bit of um, him, I suppose. That he, he definitely wants to remain to be seen, is the language that was used it's by the It's very parents. important, actually, that he is in a way of kind of reassuring I the think public, especially for it? what he's going through. And, uh, you know, we saw him with Rishi Sunak and saying, you know, it's all mirrors. But it's, it's, it's obviously taking a lot out of him, yeah. uh, mentally and physically, one would assume. Mm. Um, so I think we will see this sort of continued slow-motion um, king in action. Yeah, it's, it's a shift, isn't it, to using technology and, and video, really, to be able to give the public access. That, that old adage from the late Queen of you have to be seen to be believed. Mm -hmm. He can't just disappear, whether he wants to or not. And, and so, as Russell mentioned, Afia, we've got the Commonwealth Day yep. service uh, on Monday, mm -hmm. a big event yep. for the royal family that would have been led by the king. Mm -hmm. And instead, we're going to see him with this video message. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and so the royal family will be led by uh, Queen, yes, who has been off this week, but that will be her first engagement back after some time off. And you're right in saying Commonwealth Day is a huge day for the royal family, a big day for members of the Commonwealth. And there's, you know, so much discussion around the Commonwealth, the value of it. Will it grow? Will it shrink? Will Prince William remain to be the head of the mm. Commonwealth, even when his time comes as king. So it's a very pertinent one this year, definitely, I think. Um, and people will be eagerly awaiting that video message from the king to see what he says. I mean, last year he talked about sustainability, didn't he? Yeah. In his Commonwealth He's message. going to be speaking... You know, I had a bit of a flavour about it. It's all, all about togetherness and the 56 mm. member states and how we can sort of help each other by being uh, being sort of one, one group. And, and I think that is... that's probably quite like the royal family yeah. at the moment. I they mean, need that. While they've they? got a few of the major players out of mm. action, then they all need to be clubbing together and, and helping out where they can. Definitely. But that message of togetherness is quite pertinent for the Commonwealth as well, where you have, yes, you have these 56 members in this kind of, you know, friendship group and we all trade and we've got a WhatsApp group and it's all really fun. <laughs> um, but when you're looking at the states within the Commonwealth, so you've got Jamaica that's talking about removing the king as head of state and we know those, those 14 states are different from the Commonwealth, mm. the 56 states of the Commonwealth, but within the Commonwealth you have these countries that still have uh, the monarchy and the royal family as head of state and they're talking about removing the monarchy as head of state from their countries and that will have an effect on the Commonwealth. So that message of togetherness, I wonder how that will, will land with that. Will have countries. an effect on his reign as well. Mm. I mean that is a you know that is a, one of the big things that, that could shape um his his future. Absolutely. Well he doesn't want to be the monarch 
that loses any more yeah. of the Commonwealth. And of course, that's why the Commonwealth Day is so important. That's why, um, you know, you've got to be seen to be believed, picking up on that point, that it's so important that he um, gives this video message. And it's so brilliant that they're harnessing technology, just as yeah. his late mother did as well, of course, during the pandemic, during many occasions where her health was uh, in question. We she will was meet there. again, that mm. speech we that yeah. perfectly yeah. timed yeah. to reassure the public and, and to bring that sense of unity in a really mm. difficult time. Yeah, absolutely. And so I, I think it's, it's a great thing he'll be doing this. It's a great thing that Queen Camilla will be on top form, of course, to lead the family, something that was unimaginable only a few years ago yeah. as well and I think that the public have really taken to her so um I think it will be a nice occasion and I think this this you know this this I mean it is a very royal message this sort of let's all be together and as you say the whatsapp group that's very you know that's very sort of king speech very mm. christmas day speech mm. you know I don't think there'll be anything too controversial in there um but it's a good thing and it's a good thing we'll hear from him I think he's he's thought about that quite a lot though I mean he might not want his his reign to be shaped by you mm. know various um uh, realms leaving or ditching the royal family whatever language you want to use but mm. he he really wants to sort of push that message of togetherness partnership we don't we want to be partners rather than rulers mm. and that's something that I think that he has thought before he came into the top job because the writing's been on the wall for you, quite you a were in time. Barbados I was yeah him, I mean, you know, Barbados I remember, became you know, Republic sp yeah. speaking to him and, and the senior aide saying it's very much the mood music mm -hmm. is that you know uh, Jamaica Antigua uh, that they, they are potentially pushing the envelope more than others to say you know, we want to shape our own destiny we want to become republics mm -hmm. and I think that they're pretty much resigned to the fact that that will happen mm -hmm. so why why um try and you know push against it when, when they can try and help, help out and be partners. Now, Christo mentioned uh, the Queen being on top form when she uh, leads the Royal Family for the Commonwealth Day service, and that is because she's been taking a break this week after holding the fort since her husband's condition came to light. Uh, what do we know about this break for Camilla? Well, we don't know where she is. I mean, they haven't publicised that. It's a bit of R&R. &R. I mean, that she, Camilla normally does take this period of time in early March away from the royal family. Um, I think she's gone to some sort of holistic retreat before in India. Um, one would imagine she's uh, sort of getting a lot of rest and recovery because, you know, it's, it's been a pretty relentless schedule for her. I mean, if you look at the figures, I mean, there are only 13 engagements. Yes, I've had a, a few people say to me, unfair. oh, 13 engagements, what's I mean, a big she's deal? she's 76 but... years old. Yeah. And as Christo said, you wouldn't have ever imagined just even a few years ago that she would be, not only be front and centre, she'd be pretty much the head of the royal family. And she is the focal point at the moment. She is going to be on Monday <clears> as, the, <throat> as the senior royal yeah. there. And, uh, and I think, you know... Cut her a bit of slack. Shoot. And it's not just the physical burden, actually, it's the emotional burden Absolutely. at the moment, isn't it? A, the responsibility uh, of representing the family, but B, you know, her husband has been diagnosed mm. with cancer as well. Yeah, that's true. And that, you know, anybody knows, anybody who has a family member with an illness, it's really tough. It's really emotionally draining. It's exhausting. All the worry and the hospital appointments mm. and all that. Definitely, it's tiring. I would like to think that it's a good sign that she feels it's okay to travel and, and go far away while the king's going through this. Yes. I would hope mm. that that means it's a sign that he is doing all right and, and that He's healthy. Um, yeah, I kind, I do kind of understand what people are saying about, you know, it's only 13 engagements. I think I've done 13 things today already <laughs> by myself. And I'm not going to lie, I could do with a retreat as well if anyone would like to give one to me. But I mean, it is, yeah, should we all go? I would yeah. love to, yeah, thank yeah. you, that's so kind. Um, but it's emotionally draining, absolutely, and it's exhausting. And anybody would need a break from that. And I think there was the Salisbury Cathedral event where they couldn't get the chopper up because of the bad weather. Yeah. She did, yeah. It was something like a nine, ten hour round trip while still doing the engagement. Because she's and again, not want to let anyone down. 76 years old. Yeah. You know, whatever your viewpoint of her or the royal family is, I think, you know, cut us some slack. A time when most people would be starting to slow exactly. down. She mm. finds herself <laughs> in her most <laughs> important role. Yeah. And I think that that's the real part of this. It's not just the 13 engagements, it's the logistics. Mm. It's like, you know, when you are older, um, none of us are in this room, obviously, anywhere near that, but you, you it's the travelling to places. It's like yeah. getting there, it's getting back. It's all of those things. I love 
the Queen Camilla turnaround, by the way. I mean, I used to have absolutely no truck with Camilla whatsoever. I was a huge Diana fan. I used to be the person who used to vote on the outfits on the 0898 number at the end of Hello Magazine every we year. Do you remember Chris those? We've all been there. You know, I was like, Camilla, I mean, who is she? Now I adore her because she has just carried on and she has just ploughed on. Her story, can you imagine how much she could have got for her story if she'd ever chosen to go the other route? But she didn't. She hung in there and she completely maintained the essence of what it is to be royal, and that is keep your mouth shut, keep going, hang in there, and eventually the public will come round. And now, as you say, she is going to be not only there, head of the family whilst she is there. So, you know and as what? her own sister has said, you know, she could never have envisaged no. this turnaround, no. could she? Um, let's talk about Caribbean nations this week, uh, saying that now is the time for the king to say sorry for his ancestral involvement in the slave trade. Campaigners are demanding that King Charles apologise and make reparations this year. Their calls are echoed by aristocratic families who've made public apologies for their historic ownership of enslaved people. Uh, Fear, you've been talking a lot about this this week. Mm -hmm. um, this is increasingly loud calls for the king to say sorry. Mm -hmm. He's expressed profound sorrow, yep. but not the word sorry. Yeah. Exactly. We've had profound sorrow expressed last year ahead of Commonwealth meeting um, in Ghana as well in 2018. Uh, and we've had Prince William talking about it in Jamaica in 2022, talking about how it's a stain on, you know, on their history, on everyone's history. Now, the, the issue is, is if you're talking about uh, King Charles III as part of, you know, his family, his small, not small, but his immediate family talking about uh, or apologising for their involvement in slavery. So Charles II, you know, investing in the Royal African Company, for instance. If you're talking about that, that's one thing. But the problem is King Charles III can't separate himself from being head of state. Mm. And if he apologises for slavery um, or enslaving people, then that now brings in the UK government and therefore he's apologising on behalf of the UK government. And it's not government policy to apologise. Exactly, who don't feel that they have to do that. And if he does that, then that opens up the UK government um, to be liable for reparations, which are incalculable. There, there, there's no way of actually calculating how much money that would be. And that is the, the really big sort of entwined issue with that. For me personally, when it comes to the enslaving of people, I do think there needs to be some sort of real acknowledgement and an apology for their involvement in that, but I don't think it will ever come. Um, you've also got the Church of England this week saying mm. that they want to uh, get together a billion pound fund mm. as reparations. Now, the reparations that they're talking about is not, you know, here's 10,000 pounds because your ancestors were trafficked all around the world and you ended up here. What that is, is it's going to be a fund to support black entrepreneurs um, community groups, authors, which I think is a great way of doing that. And lots of people have talked about that. They've got a huge problem with it. But what you need to remember is the Church of England is a private company. It's a private business. And the fund that they want to r raise money for is going to have private investment. It's not taxpayers' money. It's not URI's money. Um, it's people who want to invest in that fund to do that. And I think that's a brilliant idea. I mean, Russell, the, the King has certainly shown more of a willingness to engage on this topic than... Perhaps the late Queen, we didn't hear anything from about this. We've been told that the King is supporting an independent research project into the British royal family's uh, historic links to the transatlantic slave trade, for example. And he can't ignore it, can he? Because the calls are getting louder and louder. And when any member of the royal family goes on a royal tour to a former colony, those questions are going to be asked. Well, they, they are, and they, and they, so they should are. be. I mean, yeah. I was with Prince William in Jamaica when he made that speech, and it fell pretty flat, to be honest. Mm. You're talking about um, his, uh, I think the words he used was profound sorrow, and King Charles has spoken about the indelible stain of slavery. Mm. Now, the research project you mentioned is very interesting because that will delve into the, the royal family's links to slavery, which have already been well publicised, but it is not going to be pretty reading. No. And, and it's going to be very, very uncomfortable. And he must respond to mm. it. So, again, that opens up the floodgates, possibly, because yeah. if he then doesn't offer an apology on behalf of the British monarchy, then why isn't he doing that? Is it then because his hands are tied by the British government who have 
in part paid reparations that they deem um, adequate. Uh, I think it's a real issue. And, yet, and then you, th you look at the other um, the British realms who are, who are thinking of leaving. Well, they will have ample ammunition to, mm. to do so. And it's whether he can separate himself and his family from his role as, as head of state. Can he apologise on behalf of his ancestors and not on behalf of Britain and the mm. British government? And when he speaks, is he speaking on behalf of the head of, in his role as head mm -hmm. of state? I thought that whenever the king speaks, he's speaking on behalf of his role of the head of state. I think with this independent research report, I think he has, he's almost backed himself into a, a corner with this because what will be the outcome here? And I think the, I, I take your point about the, the, the Church of England being slightly different, but I worry about this opening up the prospect of reparations from the government, meaning that you might have this situation um, and I know we don't want to get into a big chat about whether reparations are a good thing or not, but you might end up in this situation where the government feels obliged that their head of state has now acknowledged that government money, taxpayers' money, needs to be paid to people. That's another conversation altogether. But the thing I think that is always forgotten in this conversation, and is almost the, the, the not-so-secret weapon, is this king, King Charles, as Prince Charles, has done more for people who are black entrepreneurs, black people who are, 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 are people of different ethnicities that that perhaps have been come from underprivileged backgrounds through the Prince's Trust. Yeah. Now, perhaps the response to this should be, right, we're expanding that. We're actually going to make that even, even bigger. I think it's 70 million a year that, that that raises now. So I think that he is, he could almost use the contents of this report to say, right, this is what I plan on now doing or, or, my, or what I want William to do with the Prince's Trust to take this forward and perhaps uh, make the balance better that way mm. rather than let's get into reparations. But let's remember when we talk about the, the British government and reparations, they have paid reparations to people who lost enslaved people with the abolition mm, of slavery. That's the issue. Um, and all of us as taxpayers were paying those reparations up until 2015. So that's in recent memory, in the last 10 years. We only just finished paying those reparations to people who lost enslaved people when slavery was abolished. But what about the people who were enslaved and their ancestors? Yeah, there are many, many questions still to be answered. And, and when that report is finalised, it'll be very interesting to see how the King mm. does indeed respond to it. Uh, on Sunday, the youngest of the King's siblings, Prince Edward, will reach his landmark 60th birthday. Um, will there be a big celebration for this one? I mean, we, I, we tend to think of the Duke and Duchess of Edinburgh as being in the younger generation of the family, because we've got such a you know, ageing, working royals, particularly yeah. at the yeah. moment. Well, we do. I mean, so. seven out of the 11 are over the age of 70. You know, Princess Anne, she's 73, and she's still going Doesn't strong. Doesn't like it, yes. Absolutely not, putting them all to shame. And I think, uh, I don't think necessarily a big, big celebration. I think the palace obviously mark it in some way. I do feel that, you know, we could be seeing more from the Duke and Duchess of Edinburgh. I mean, there's a lot of discussion about Sophie being the royal, uh, royal family's secret weapon, the fact that she was uh, very, very close to the late queen, you taught slim down monarchy. Slim down monarchy is looking pretty threadbare at the moment with the, with the main players off work. And we've, we've, we've seen them sparingly. And I think that Sophie is very well liked. Edward's well liked. I mean, she he's does doing... a lot of work around, you know, violence, sexual she, and, violence against and around the world and, as well, not just UK. Speaking to a conference in Ukraine this week, she was believe, on, the, on, yes. the, on behalf of or invited by the first lady. So he's very respected in those arenas, and I think we could be seeing more for them. So could is Are this we responsible for that though, partly Russell, because although she is doing that work, it just doesn't necessarily get the platform. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, that is the, the, the pro problem, isn't it? Because when you've got the younger, arguably more glamorous royals, and uh, especially when the Duke and Duchess of Sussex were here as well, yeah. Nobody covered her engagement since the, the, old, uh, the old Princess Royal question, isn't it? Why don't we hear more of her, her engagements? Mm. Well, perhaps this is a golden opportunity. Christo? Uh, well, I, you know, slim down monarchy. I think it's the Ozempic monarchy at the moment. <laughs> We've got absolutely no, none of them. Um, well, firstly, Princess Anne, I think that she's bionic. I mean, I think that she's a machine. The way in which she just carries on and does so much is amazing. But the thing... Again, we've had the turnaround of Camilla. The thing I love about Prince Edward is the, is the turnaround. He was a laughing stock. He left the armed forces. Everyone laughed at it. He started the production company, which really didn't seem to do much 
at but all. It, it bombed. It, it bombed. It's a knockout. <laughs> yeah. it's, it's a knockout. Right it's a knockout. knockout. Yeah. I mean, that is just, I mean, oh, you know, that is, is the most biggest PR disaster. I don't know which, if Lenny again, is doing pretty well at the moment. Maybe they should bring it back. <laughs> yeah, I, I, yeah, I just don't think so. So, um, yeah, I, I just think the turnaround for him, now he's actually taken quite seriously, mm. whereas there was a time where he was something of a national Well, do you know what? I think he doesn't take himself too seriously. Mm. And if you ever see him doing a plaque unveiling, which is obviously royal family fodder, he gets right into it, very bombastic, theatrical well, the amateur dramatic. Absolutely. Yes. <laughs> and, and I think by, by not taking himself seriously, people have respected him a lot more. He's yes. doing, going great guns with the International Duke of Edinburgh Award at the moment. So mm. more... Edwin Safety, is that what we're calling for? Yeah. Yeah. Um, Let's talk about the Duchess of Sussex because we're going to be seeing her this week. She's joining a panel called Breaking Barriers, Shaping Narratives, How Women Lead On and Off the Screen. It is to mark International Women's Day. The group, including Meghan, was described as visionary female leaders at the forefront of news, media, entertainment and philanthropy who are breaking barriers, challenging stereotypes and working towards a healthier society on and off our screens. Uh, She's going to be alongside the actor book Shields, uh, the journalist Katie Couric, among others, uh, and it will be fascinating to hear what her contributions are to that discussion of here. Yeah, definitely. This is taking place at South by Southwest, which is a huge festival uh, that takes place in Austin in Texas. Uh, and this is the type of things that the Duchess of Sussex wants to do, wants to be known for, and actually did long time before she was in the royal family. She'd done a lot of philanthropy and work around women's rights and girls' rights. So this is 100% up her street. She'll be very comfortable in this arena. And I think it'll be really interesting on, on, to, to hear what she has to say. And this is what the Duke and Duchess of Sussex want to be doing more of, mm-hmm. focusing on the causes that they care about, doing their philanthropy and carrying on that way. Mm. Yes. Christo, what's the hesitation there? <laughs> well, firstly, I think that she probably wrote that biog herself that's uh, about her being this sort of, you know, woman of philanthropy. Second, I don't think she did loads of philanthropy when she was in um, Suits. I think she did a couple of speeches. Um, would have been nice to have seen her being supportive of a, 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 a woman in the public eye, i.e. our late Queen, by not absolutely trashing the family whilst the Queen was... was uh, health was was failing um and i think that it will be nice to see her actually turn up for an event to do something like this because when it came to her podcast of inspirational women she didn't turn up for half of the recordings unless it was someone famous so i'm slightly cynical when it comes to things like this Uh, i'm afraid when it comes to the duchess of sussex um and i always i'm afraid look at all this stuff through the prism of okay how is this going to benefit them so that they can monetize this down the line, because I think that's what it's all about with them. I think that's... Russell? Well, I thought I think we saw a lot from the updated bios on the website, didn't we? And, it is, and I'm glad... You know, this was a bit of a cut and paste from that, actually. Yeah, I mean, it seems as though. About... It's the same language, isn't it? It's, they're trying to reshape their, per, their, their... I suppose, how they're perceived on the, on the global stage. I mean, Harry has been involved in litigation after litigation, mm. row after row with his family. And, uh, and Meghan has been quietly sort of beavering away in the background. So let's just say the Spotify deal has sort of come and gone, but they do really need to have an identity I feel so certainly with Megan and this and is Harry. very much in in yeah, along the lines of what the, the, the way they want to shape Archwell. Exactly. And, yes. Yeah. Um, we're going to talk about Gary Goldsmith now, <laughs> the uncle of Catherine, Princess of Wales, Buncle, bad uncle, as he describes himself. He has entered the celebrity Big Brother house. The 58-year-old businessman, the younger brother of the princess's mother, Carol. Uh, Goldsmith is a controversial character, having been convicted of hitting his wife, as well as a string of alleged misdemeanours. You've been following this closely, Christo. How... What have we learnt from Uncle Gary so far? How is he coming across? Um, And how damaging is it, do you think, for the royal family at this point? Well, I think he's weirdly coming across as a bit of an insecure character. I mean, he keeps referencing the fact that he feels like a little bit of a fish out of water among all of these uh, celebrities. Um, He has been quite um, defensive, actually, when it comes to... 
um, Princess Catherine and Prince William and, 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 and making sure that he's very much towing the line. He's very loyal. Very, very loyal indeed. Reference that he'd very recently spoken to his sister, Carol, regarding um, uh, Princess Catherine's health. Um, but also, again, he, he did uh, trash Harry and Meghan, saying words to the effect of that when there were three of them, when it was Prince William, Princess Catherine and, and, and just Harry, it was all absolutely hunky-dory. And then when Meghan came along, it, it sort of, you know, blew the whole thing apart. Um, and... So I think when it comes to the royals, they will probably... I mean, they're probably not thrilled that he's in there, but at least he is very much towing the line in what he's saying. He's saying quite a lot, though, isn't he, Afia? He's... I'm loving Fern Britton in there because, I you know, the journalist in me, is she's probing questions mm. but in such a nice way that you can't not answer. Exactly. I think Fern's doing a good job. I have to say, I think that um, Uncle Gary is just dining out on lines that he's seen in the media. I honestly believe that he has no knowledge whatsoever. He is just towing that party line of, what I'm going to do is I'm going to feed into this divisive narrative, because that's good. People like that. Um, it's it's not like he was out with Harry, um, the prince, then the prince and princess of Wales, hanging out with the three of them. He wasn't there, so he doesn't know. I feel like he just has no knowledge. Um, and this, and, and he's just literally picking up lines from the media and running with that to try and make himself look good. And to be honest, I think it's pathetic. And I also have a real problem with someone who um, has been involved in domestic violence, been platformed in this way. As someone who's been through that myself, I'm just like, no. Well, for, me, for me, it's a massive well, no. Women, women's Aid came out this week and, and appealed to ITV and said that it was essentially dangerous to have... Uh, Why is it being platformed a, a, in this way? Um, ...someone convicted in that way to on a, on a prime-time show. And, mm. I mean, certainly, um, I don't think the Palace probably t paid too much attention to him being there. Mm. But he was asked he... when he went in, wasn't he, if, if Kate would be watching. He said, well, if she is, it's from behind the sofa. I mean, I would imagine... Well, the other thing he did say is that he's, he finds it very, very hard to get hold of her. So I think there was a relationship... <laughs> Because she's blocked him. Well, William and Kate did, you know, they went to La Maison Bang Bang in Ibiza, which he, uh, he invited, well, after he invited them over, then he got an invitation to the wedding. Um, but I don't think his relationship is anything like he's making out. Of I think course totally right. But he's always invited to stuff. He's always at Well, I think that's quite stuff. clever, isn't it? Because yeah. they keep him at arm's length, but mm -hmm. close enough. He's still part of the family. And actually, you know, he did say, I, I love my family. I don't want to hurt my family, and I think they'll be very relieved. But, you know, when you think about Meghan's family and actually her sister, half-sister, Samantha Markle, and the kind of things that she said... And the father just sort of spouting mm, out off, yeah. you know, whenever there is an opportunity to do so, at least he's possibly, to now, towing the line. But I do think it's a, an issue having him... And, 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 he, and he himself said that his mouth does run away uh, with him sometimes, so they'll be hoping that doesn't happen. He is up for eviction. Yeah, but within 48 he hours, he's there. I mean, he's literally... I mean, he hasn't he's, held back and thought... But he's got to, hasn't he? Because otherwise, why is he there? Literally. You know, everyone else looking at yeah, him thinking, what, what, what are you, are you doing here? here? Why, and, why and are you here? And it's yeah. funny, him saying that has made uh, Sharon Osbourne, who's sort of sort of queen of the house, um, uh, say, well, actually, that's why I've put you up for eviction, because you keep sort of saying, why are you here? So I agree, why are yeah, you here? Um, well, lots more still to come uh, from Uncle Gary, potentially. We will be watching. Uh, thank you very much indeed to Russell, uh, Afia and Christo for joining us this week. That is all we've got time for. But if you want to join in with the debate, please leave a comment and make sure you subscribe if you don't want to miss a single episode. We'll be back next week with all of the latest on the royal family. Hope you can join us. We'll see you then. <laughs>